Cape to Cairo throughout all the continent. This is the business end of the, a beautiful week of basketball action that we have been witnessing in Johannesburg. Having gone undefeated through three games of their campaign, Urunani is definitely looking to maintain their streak and finish all the way up at the mountaintop. They face a wounded Tabera of Mozambique, defending champions of the East Division, who are looking to bounce back from their loss to City Oilers of Uganda in their previous encounter. This, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, is the business end of all that has been beautiful to witness in Johannesburg. Both coaches will certainly be looking that Friday's rest allowed their personnel to recuperate and re-energize for what should be a strong finish to the week's action. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew Sindlovu, father to Angel and Melody, and I am absolutely delighted to bring you this game alongside the expertise of coach Mpumi Ramatoha. Thanks, Juice. We're in for an exciting day of basketball this afternoon. These four teams playing today still looking for their qualification for the BAL in 2023. And so we should be expecting to see a fight out on the court. Absolutely, coach. And as you can see, uh, the players warming up on the floor. You can already tell that you are, they are hoping that all energy levels are high as we look at some of the keys to the game for Urunani. You know, you've seen in their previous encounters the likes of Adonis uh, Filer, the man on the screen, Taj Parker. You are looking and hoping if you are uh, the coach of Urunani that he will come back and continue on the strong streak of double-digit rebounding as we have seen in previous encounters. Of course, Adonis Filer, the man who has been carrying the bulk of their scoring. He is certainly a key to this game. Both coaches will be looking to either have him stopped or either have him continue on his streak. Adonis came out and he was the only scorer for uh, Urenani in the previous encounter that scored a game high 28 points. The only man scoring in double digits for that encounter. Yeah, Fyla has definitely been carrying up the bulk of the scoring for this Uru Nani team. He was fantastic in that final group game against the Cape Town Tigers. The game that really gave them the number one seed in that group. You know, he had 28 points to go with his seven rebounds and four steals to put this team on his shoulders and get them the win. And of course, the man on the screen now, William Perry, all the way from North Carolina with love. Of course, the North Carolina, uh, the North American combo, combo for Beira, that is William Perry as well as Michael Murray, have been instrumental as we are now looking at the starting lineup for Urinani. Of course, Adonis, Adonis uh, Fila, Adeji, Parker, uh, Kuzungzubingwa, and that man, Nijimbere. Kuibak, Nijimbere, a very prolific scorer as well in his right as we see Beira being introduced on the floor. And of course, both coaches will, will be looking to make sure that the inside and outside presence of all players, as we see the big man Ndondo, and of course, that man Austin, just making sure that they are coming in to stamp their authority in the paint area for Tabera. Yeah, what Beira really need, um, Juice, is for it to come together in terms of scoring. In game one, we saw a very God-heavy scoring lineup where the bigs of this team were just three of 14 combined. There, I'm talking about Ndondo, Ubisi, and Mufunyana. And so in the second game, we had a little bit more scoring inside the paint, but we haven't quite seen the juggernaut that Beira can be in terms of having the guards and the bigs are firing on all cylinders in the same game. True indeed, it will certainly be one to watch there because the defensive and battles within the paint, we are expecting a stampede uh, in, in the paint area as we see uh, Urunani players being introduced and coming onto the floor. Of course, Coach Garcia, a master tactician, as our colleague, um, esteemed colleague Quinton has mentioned that he knows a very good part of the Mozambican system of play and he should definitely use that to his advantage in how he has planned out for this game. 
he should indeed you know he's had extensive experience in that Mozambican league and so he will know a little bit about the style of play that happens there and really just for Beira they are a team that gets out in transition they're a team that runs if you look at some of the numbers the points of turnovers for Beira 16.7 per game in this contest and the fast break points 16 a game and in comparison Urinani not really as much of a transition team getting only 7.3 points um, of turnovers and 3.2 of fast breaks as we take a look there at our match officials who will be looking to guide this game for us today and hoping that it will be as seamless as we've seen in all the other games that we've seen this week quick huddle by the Beira players and as you can see ladies and gentlemen our venue for the day while we're looking at the starting five for the Beira that man Numamande he will certainly be instrumental because he has been scoring in double figures uh, coach Hernandez will be certainly looking for him Mare, Perry, Ubise, Munungwambe definitely a great and solid starting lineup there for Beira and they will be hoping that all energy levels will be right and locked from tip off Of course, Coach Alberto Hernandez standing by while we're seeing the players doing their last bits of warm-ups on the floor. That man, Nijimbere, prolific scorer, came out firing the other day uh, against, uh, against the Oilers, making four for four from three-point range in the first quarter. So it will be interesting to see how he comes out in this game. They are going to need a big performance from Nijimbere on the outside for shooting. And of course, that's the advantage of this Urinani team. From the outside, they are shooting it at 31% from beyond the arc, while Beira just shoot it at 10% less at 21.3. That man, Adonis Filer, Tamaj Parker, a nuisance in the paint. A double double rebounding machine. William Perry, I call him from North Carolina with love because a very familiar face within the southern uh, African uh, space, uh, Coach Bumi, as he came out during earlier in the year for the uh, memorial, for the Ashraf Memorial Tournament, and he was running for uh, the phenomenal phenoms where he came out as the MVP of the tournament, running, of course, alongside his running mate, uh, my main man, Jamel Kennedy. So, the twin troublesome sons. William Perry is phenomenal. He was fantastic in their final group game. Unfortunately, that didn't end in a loss, but he had 21 points. And you see that man there from Brooklyn, New York, the other North American for Beira, it is Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray, a.k.a. the Afro Man. Look at my man Dondo with this size. Certainly, you will be you're looking to exploit on that size, and hopefully the guards will find him early and have him go to work in that paint area. We're going to hope for a double-digit scoring day from him. We still haven't had one. You know, he has been effective. He's been grabbing those rebounds. But in terms of, of being a more of an offensive threat, it's been tough going for Ndondo so far in this competition. Some fans making the travel and making their way out to Ellis Park Arena. Very good to see a contingent from Mozambique looking at it having that popcorn and definitely looking to enjoy the affairs of the day. The Burundian contingent very much energized and kept their team in it against the Cape Town Tigers and you will know that they remain vocal throughout the game. The crowd was amazing against the home team Tigers, really made themselves heard to make sure to help this Urinani team get over the top of the Cape Town Tigers. Absolutely, and there is nothing more beautiful than being in a hostile environment, but seeing familiar faces in the crowd that continue to urge you on through your battle. Certainly a very great motivator for them. And of course, the socials. Hit us up. Hashtag Road to Bow throughout all the socials. Twitter, Insta, Facebook and all that. 
a legend in South African soil there. We just caught a flash of the legendary Michael Findlay. The young kids out as well doing the socials. Michael Findlay, of course, he has been a catalyst for a lot of programs within South Africa. We saw a lot of young men and women go out abroad to ply their trade within different colleges, thanks to part of the work that he continues to do. Some Cape Town Tigers fans already in the building, waiting in anticipation for later on. But before that, they will certainly be treated to another beautiful game of basketball between Tabera and Urunani. Final instructions there from Coach Hernandez, making sure that, listen guys, this is the business end of it. It's time to dance, time to go to work as we get ready for tip-off. And ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready for tip-off, this is the road to Baal 2023. My name once again, Jusin Lovu, running alongside Coach Mpumi Ramatsoha, and we get ready for tip-off. Malale, there, caught a silhouette of him behind his coach, looking to also come off the bench with some good energy. Tamaj Parker to tip it off, and Ubise for Beira. And we've got tip-off as Parker wins tip-off for Urunani as we see them bringing up for their first possession of the game to just see what they can build up to just get this game going. Kubert Nijimbere looking at it early. Nothing there for him as William Perry brings it up for Beira. And Uri Nani are going to try and see really early on just if they can hit from the outside. That is their advantage in this game. Nemo Mande faking it but driving it. Couldn't finish there. Rebound ball stays with Beira. Reset back to Perry at the top. Nemo Mande. Boom! As he breaks the spine and gets Beira off to their scoring with a big three-pointer. That is a really good start for Numa Monday. They're going to be happy with that. In the last two games, he's managed double-digit points after just scoring two in the first game of this tournament. Good rebound there by Michael Murray. We saw how he hit the versatility of his game in the previous game that he just plays inside, outside, grabbing the boards as William Perry follows through and gives Beira two more points. Fantastic start here for Beira as we see Urunani yet to score. Looking through there, pick and roll, nothing there. Murray stays with it. Parker on the spin, finishes. Great finish there by Parker as he gets Urunani on the score. Parker does well to finish on the inside. You know, this Urunani team averaged just seven points in the paint. Parker there comes away with it. Quick drive there. Filer dishes out. Long range there. Nothing. Nijimbere for the reset. Drives. Nothing there. Good movement there by Beira as they come away with it. William Perry on the steal, on the drive. Couldn't finish there. Michimbere 
chatted about it at the top of the broadcast is oh as we see that layup go in there one two punch there between Nijin Barra and Parker great finish on the inside what I was gonna say is that Barra is the more um, the better team in transition but then we saw an Urunani bucket in transition absolutely and uh, those are the energy levels that you will be looking for as Ubise makes a great layup there for Barra Filer. Nothing there for Parker. Outlet. Big rebounds there. Gather. And of course, Perry finding Murray. Murray for the drive. Big score there. On the previous possession, we saw much better interior defense as we see it there as well from Beira, just really contesting the shot on the inside. Beira certainly starting the game with some very good active hands and active bodies as you see. Number Monday breaking away there for two more. And Coach Garcia has seen enough and he certainly calls the timeout to just make sure he resets and resettles his team back into the thick of things. We are taking it on the floor with our main man, Quinton, just to find out what is happening within this timeout. Well, I'm courtside and looking at the way that Ferviario Beira have started out, especially scoring with the through their guards, it's interesting that Landry Ndikumana started off on the bench. So trying to see exactly what coach Josepa Garcia is thinking here courtside. The timeout call because Beira go on a run. Let's look out for the adjustments that come out of this timeout. Thank you very much, Quinton as we see what adjustments the coaches would have made to just go back into the thick of things. So, and as we see, scores are currently sitting at 11 to four to Beira. Beira have certainly done a great job to come out firing and here they actually come out in a full court press. Full court press works beautifully as they trapped and a travel call called by the refs and Beira gets back the possession. Coach really unhappy there, looking extremely animated on the sideline. He has been a joy to watch on those sidelines throughout the tournament. Mare on the attack, pulls up, nothing there. They get a reprieve and a rebound, Perry to reset. Nice back cut there, but couldn't finish. Throws it away, Nijimbere on the interception. Foul called there on Nomomande. Great interception there uh, by Nijimbere. Nijimbere. Nijimbere, excuse me, did a great job to get in the lane. And an ill-advised foul by Nomomande. There was a man a little bit further down. And at this point of the game, you certainly want to avoid some of those uh, fouls, uh, Coach Bumi. Looks like an unsportsman. Uh, foul has been called as Nijimbere is going to the charity stripe. Makes the free throw. And makes his second as they will also regain the possession of the ball. The people you really don't want to send to the free throw line are the ones that are usually very good shooters from the outside. And, so and, 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 and coach, the, if you send them to the, uh, to, the, to the charity stripe early in the game, it can actually be dangerous because it can get them into rhythm for their shooting. Nice entry pass there. Nothing there for Parker on that dunk attempt. He received much resistance there from the defense of Debeira. De Beira have certainly done a better job in the last couple of possessions to play that interior defense. And the interior will always be part of your main key 
because the effectiveness that you have on the inside will leave all your shooters open for the shots later on in the game. Perry. Offensive foul called there by the ref. Illegal screen. Urunani gains possession of the ball. Adonis Filer bringing it up. Dead. Looking at it. Was looking for that pick and roll there, but couldn't find it. And they throw it right back to Urunani, but uh, Nijibere could not capitalize on that. Beira brings it up, brings it back. No more Monday, nothing there on that three point attempt. You gotta love the modern game, open three point shot in transition. A bit like a layup these days. A bit like a layup and Coach Mpumi, we continue to hear through some of the corridors that there's a lot of blame being given to Steph Curry for all this shooting that we've seen. As we see a nice jumper there by Nijimberi. Certainly looks like those free throws have, uh, have, have gotten his palate wet and he's ready to start shooting. Sometimes all a shooter needs is to see the ball go through the rim once to get going. Rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Obisi on the inside, finishes nicely there on the glass, but Parker knows that he could have got into that, but the experience of Obisi certainly shows on that, on that layup. Fyla setting it up, Nijibere spreading the love, going inside. Cross court to Fyla. Of course, he's going to pull up. Shot clock. We definitely made sure that he shoots before the shot clock violation there. Nama Monday makes a tipsy do on the baseline. Great finish there by him. You know, you come into a game against Barrow and really you expect the people to get going early because traditionally it has been Perry and Murray. So it's great to see Numa Monday getting in on the action. Certainly one of the keys to the game there because while most of the attention is grabbed by Murray and, 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 and Perry, you want to, to see your other veterans showing up and piling on on both ends of the floor. And that is not a good sign for Barrow as Numa Monday picks up his second in the game already with three minutes left in the first quarter. Certainly one to look out for there for Coach Hernandez. Wonder how he's going to look at that as we see now Nemo Mande going to the bench. Perry on the steal, Perry on the drive. Let's see what he can cook up there. Big block there by Adonis Fila. What a defensive play there by Fila to stay with it. Fantastic job by Fila to just chase Perry down in transition and get the block. Landry couldn't finish there. Travel called by the ref on that rebound. Perry on that beautiful drive there. But Adonis Filer building a filing cabinet to make sure he stores that beautifully in it. Adonis Filer, a seasoned pro having gone through Greece and Bulgaria before playing the 2022 edition of the BAL with the Rwanda Energy Group. Bad court violation there, but it looks like we are, they're calling it short clock violation. Great defensive play there by Debeira, who will get to inbound the ball on the other end of the floor. Obisi on the inbound. Perry setting it up, looking at it. Perry on the pull up, Perry on the make. William Perry is a bad man, Jesus. Trust me, trust me. We continue to see a lot of him and, and how smooth, efficient, and just very mature in how he handles the game on both ends. As we see yet another big shot there by Nijimbere. You called it, coach. You see it going once, you definitely know you got your rhythm. 
love to see Jimreta take those shots. They are going to have to find a way to slow him down. True indeed, but on the other end, Yuru Urunani will certainly look to slow down William Perry as we see Adonis Filer on the drive there. Kick out. Finds his man. Man finds all in and out. And one big rebound, big put back there by Landry Ndikumana. Captain Landry Ndikumana. Definitely way to stay with it and putting it back right between the trees of the Beira defense. We saw Ndukumara have a fantastic game in game one against the Kenya Port Authority. He came out with a double-double, 18 points and 14 rebounds. And the icing on the cake for that one, four assists. You know that that is leadership if you are able to play and contribute to all the different aspects and elements of the game. Very great contributions there by Captain Landry. And makes the free throw to, com to, to complete the three-point play. As we see, great drive there, but just couldn't finish. William Perry getting a rest there on the bench to finish the quarter. Malale gets a chance to run the affairs for Beira on the floor. He did a fantastic job to find Murray cutting there on the baseline. Murray, of course, getting fouled, but what a find. Great find there, threading the needle as we see Murray going to the charity stripe for two. Makes his first. Amari, a new player to Beira in this season, spent last year out in Saudi Arabia. As he goes two for two to complete a great trip to the charity stripe. And he gets to go to the bench for a quick rest to also finish the quarter and catch a breather. Beira continue to be in that full court press of the bucket. Captain Armando Baptista, of course, coming in uh, for, for uh, Michael Murray there for his first minutes and first contribution of the game. Malale bringing it up, Ubisa looking at it. Novella spreading the love. That man, Austin on the hook shot, just couldn't finish. Novella looking at it. Sizing it up. Ubisa with the pull up, nothing there. Unani comes away with it. A bit of a chaotic offensive possession there for Beira. As they go there to look for Captain versus Captain there, as we see Landry and Baptista going at each other. Foul called by the refs. Looks like it was a travel call there, coach as we see the ball going to Beira. I cannot say enough about this interior defense from Beira here in the first quarter. They've done a phenomenal job. And already, Urinani is a team, like I said, that only averages seven points in the paint, but Beira have made it even more difficult in this contest. Indeed, and that has been beautiful to watch as we counting down to the end of the quarter with the shot clock and game clock looking very much identical. What can they cook here is Beira. Whistle there by the ref. Foul called on Landry. Ball to be inbounded with 2.8 seconds to go on the clock. Let us see what they can quickly cook up as coach Hernandez just calls his troops for a timeout to see what he can cook up to finish this quarter. It's a pretty great timeout call. 2.8 seconds, you want to see if you can go into the next quarter with some momentum off a made bucket.
as we see some highlights there from the quarter. William Perry finding that man, Nama Mande, for that three to get their scoring off. And, of course, on that break as well, Nama Mande breaking away, adding uh, two more points. And, of course, the dipsy do. He goes the up and under there, did Nama Mande, making sure that he keeps the score ahead for Beira. Nama Mande has been fantastic in this first quarter. He has seven points already, two of three from two, and one of two from downtown. It's just unfortunate that he's already picked up two fouls in this opening frame. Indeed. So now he needs to manage his presence and his contact better on the floor because they definitely need him out there. Now let's see what Coach Hernandez has cooked up to end this quarter. Big drive there, just could not finish on the layup there on that drive, did Ubise as we come to the end of the first quarter coach it was excellently executed there except for the miss of course but to get the bucket the look at the bucket a really good look at the bucket it was a great job by this bearer squad to execute what coach had drawn up As we confirm the scores at the end of the first quarter, it is Urunani 15 and Ferrovario Tibera of Mozambique 19. Looking at some of those first quarter stats, Urunani just 3 of 9 from inside, Bera 7 of 16. From the 3.9, it's been on Urunani 2 of 9, while Bera just 1 of 2. Free throw line, not very many trips, but both teams remain perfect. 3 of 3 for Urunani, and Bera with 2 of 2. Well, it is Urunani trailing behind in this first quarter, and it only makes sense that I speak to a fan. Thank you so much, Patrick. You don't seem happy. What did you make of that opening quarter? Uh, no, we just, you know, it's just the first quarter. we just a little bit behind, but uh, we, we trust our teams. We know that we're going to make the second quarter. Where do you think Pharaoh's dominating? Sorry? Where do you think Pharaoh's dominating? No, it just you know it's just a bad startup. But I'm sure that uh, our teams is going to arrange ourselves, make them sure that we make good good blocks, and also try to get a speed and then get the match. Thank you. Mm, thank you. As we get ready for the start of the second quarter, there, Captain Armando Baptista to get us off on the way there, as we get the revs gets the thumbs up there and definitely ready for that inbound as Malale stays on the floor uh, to start the quarter for Beira. And of course, you can get in touch with us on all the socials there. Hashtag road to BAL. Malale there on the pull up there. Nothing but big rebound. Reprieve there for Novella in and out. One more rebound there on the Gather Malala on the drive. Great drive, just could not connect with Novella there, cutting on the baseline. Unlucky not to make that. He's done a great job of facilitating Malala has for this team with his minutes on the floor. And you see there, Captain Armando Baptista grimacing there in pain. Looks like he took a awkward shot there uh, on his body. Looking at it there, nothing but big rebound there. Landry on the pull-up. Landry on the make as he brings it. 18 for Urunani. Malale, Novella, Captain Baptista. Great interact, inter, in, in, inter sharing of the ball there. As we see a big rebound, then nothing though could not finish. Novella gets it back for Beira. Big cut there by Mala. Oh, big block there by Parker. On both ends, it's tough to get inside. Jeez, this very nanny defense on the inside has been efficient to start the second quarter. You have to appreciate them. Busy hands and what a thread 
middle thread there to find Co Captain Landry and he does indeed reciprocate that by finishing beautifully under that hoop. You have to appreciate how active the hands are on both ends of the defensive uh, end for both teams, uh, Coach Bumi, and it certainly makes it difficult for anybody to just come in and penetrate at any given point. The defense has been fantastic, and it, it's indicative of the score. Just 19-20, as we see the replay there, the big block. Tamaj Parker certainly sending it back to Mozambique. And on the other end, just a beautiful pass inside to the ceiling, Parker, for that easy two. There is nothing more beautiful than seeing a thread of a needle being finished accordingly. And Filer making sure that he finds uh, his teammate there uh, under the hoop. Nietzsche better with the steal there. Fila coming, coming away with it. Fila on the reset, setting it up there. And Beira now in a 2-3 defense. Fila on the drive just could not finish as he looks for the ref there, asking him, where is my call? Malale on the drive finds Ubise, who finishes beautifully also under the hoop there. Two more for Beira. It's going to be a long night for Urunani if they cannot slow down Beira in transition. That is their game. They've got to slow it down. Beira certainly making sure that they continue to capitalize on those transition plays and making and finding each other for the easier looks, for the easy bunnies. Niji Beira could not finish there as Malale comes with it for Beira. Goes inside there. Baby hook shot there, and baby make shot there, and baby two more points there for Beira. Fantastic move on the inside to get that two. Austin Mufunanya. Big Austin. Mufunanya. I'm certain that there are certain places that you can take him here in South Africa where he might even be mistaken for Big Zulu. <laughs> Jump ball called there by the refs uh, after that tussle on the floor. And you can see, Coach Mpumi, that it is always going to be a battle inside. And you appreciate seeing your guys on the floor. Novella, Captain Baptista also diving there and tussling and making sure that he leads by example where effort is concerned. Well, geez, we can expect a battle all game long. The, ga the team that wins this one has a guaranteed spot in the Basketball Africa League in 2023. And you know, both these teams want it bad. Indeed, especially with Beira being the defending champions of the division, they certainly want to make sure that they continue on, uh, on, on building for last season and making sure that they make yet another run at the BAL in 2023. Of course, Beira not having the most fantastic season out in the BAL showing. They were just one of four, taking losses to US Monastir, ASLA, SLAC, and Rwanda Energy, and picking up that lone win against Dakar University. Indeed, and you know that there's a lot of teachable moments in trips like that, because as alluded at the top of the broadcast, it is not the losses that you take, but you embrace all the lessons in them. Austin Mufunyana there on that grab, but foul called there. Fila planting his body and making sure he puts it on the way and making sure that he gives all resistance for against Beira. Fala did a good job to just get his body in position and put it on the line to draw that charge. Imagine taking a charge from such a big man. Nietzsche Barrett, cross court, finds Fyler. Fyler loses it. And of course, Novella almost lost it there, but Malele on the trail and Malele on the finish. Great recognition and way to stay with it there, did Malele. The young Malele, of course, 
coming in on the bench, playing a very beautiful backup for William Perry, but making sure that he capitalizes and contributes and gives great energy on the floor on all the time that he spends on there. And of course, timeout Urunani. Of course, you can see the future of the game is in the building to witness the beauty of the BAL basketball action. Gang signs, of course. Who you rapping, coach? Who you rapping, coach? As we see some of the highlights there, William Perry with a hand to his face uh, is able to finish on that play as on the other end as well. Parker, beautiful spin move and a great finish there. Michael Murray, of course, he will not be denied on that drive and a smooth finish there. As smooth as no ends on his afro. Of course, shout outs to the contingent traveling all the way from Burundi. It is the love of the game that keeps us growing. And of course, Coach Flosh Nguenya already in the building, looking and taking scouting reports. We will see his Cape Town Tigers in action later on in the, in the evening. Adonis Filer bringing it up. Landry. Spreading the love. Looking to thread the needle there, but could not connect. He says, let just bounce that to me next time for that easier catch is Baru. But Malale continues to be on the floor for Beira as we hit halfway in the quarter. And of course, playing very well. Oh, Novella almost lost it there. But ball stays with Beira. Substitutions, more substitutions there on the floor. As we see Kuvakure being introduced into the game. And we go down to Quentin Dinesan at courtside. Thank you, Juice. You know, they say that basketball looks like a chess match when it's well executed. And what we've seen from both coaches has been quite technical. Um, the adjustments on the Ferroviario de Beira side, throwing both presses, full court press, and going back into the zone has forced adjustments on the side of Urunani and one interesting fact is that Adonis Fial is still looking for his first bucket. They've done a pretty good job of neutralizing him, but since he's been unable to score, and that man, Landry Ndikumana, has stepped up on the interior and will continue to see how these coaches make adjustments as the game continues to unfold. Thank you very much, Quinton Dineson, QD4, for the courtside analysis there as we see Urunani bringing it up and looking to continue to cook it up. Landry on the screen, but another defensive stop there by Beira. Went up there and almost glad that he just came back up safely there with no, when you get giants like that up in the air, anything could happen but we can certainly be happy that there is no damage there and we can see the importance of push-ups coach transition 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 juice you've got to slow bear it down in transition they will certainly look to punish you the entire game as we see the mongwambe missing his first free throw You know, Q spoke a little bit about Filer still unable to score. This is a man who's averaged double-digit points throughout this competition. 13 in the first game, 17 in the second, and 28 in that big win against the Cape Town Tigers. They are going to need him to get going if they're going to have a shot at this Beira team. C certainly, Beira continues to give good resistance there. Enough as we see another steal there. Mungwambi on the drive. Just could not finish way to trail on that transition defense there by Kuvakure staying with the play there Mungwambe could not finish good active hands there Ndondo in the game Perry back in the game 
out of bounds there called by the ref. And the interesting part is that even within Filer's lack of scoring so far in the game, the lead is only six for Beira. Yeah, for Orinani, it is good news when your leading scorer is yet to have a bucket and you are still under 10 within. Mario on the drive. Mario on the dish. Dondo on the finish. Charge called there by the ref. Basket does not count, but that was a very beautiful drive there by Murray finding Dondo. Dondo, great finish there, but just unfortunately for him, great placement by Urunani. Ball back to Urunani. It was fantastic defense, but DJ to get in that spot and take the charge. We saw there as Fyler heads to the bench to get his first breather. Indeed, and you will be hoping uh, if you're a coach uh, of the coach Garcia of Urunani that it, this breather will certainly allow him to re-energize and refocus and certainly come back with his shot back on for the team. Perry on the drive, Perry on the find. Novella on the drive, finding there, boom! As we see there, a big one by Mungwambe. Mungwambe. Fantastic job by Mungwambe to knock down that three. Big rebound there by Murray. Could not find Mungwambe. Berry. Cooking it up there, Parker. Mugwambe, good hands there. Perry on the pull up. In and out. Nichi Berry on the rebound. Perry, unfortunate not to make that transition three. Great job to get him the ball. Great active hands there by Beira. Nichi Berry again on the miss. Murray finding Perry. You have to appreciate the inside presence there of Murray. He is not shy about fighting on those boards to make sure he grabs those rebounds. Murray is a fantastic rebounder. Out in his last season in Saudi Arabia for Al Safa, he averaged a double double 22.8 points a game and 14 rebounds a game to go with his two points assist. Those are beautiful numbers. Those are beautiful numbers, coach. As we see Nama Mande coming back. Nama Mande coming back into the game on that inbound. Perry on the drive. Finding Mungwambe. In and out, Mungwambe. Mario gets it back for Pera. Sets it up. And the most impressive thing about Mari's numbers are from last year, as we see a Mr. Three Day, is that he was 63.5% from the two-point range. Indeed. Setting it up there is Kuzibwa. Kuzi Boom! Three-point shot there by Genza Hayo for Urunani. Ninety seconds to go in the quarter. Dondo, Perry. Mwambe. Mwambe on the drive there, finds Mari on the baseline. Nothing there, Perry at the top. Perry on the pull-up. Perry does well there to beat the shot clock violation, but just could not make the three-pointer. William Perry yet to connect from downtown. Oh, a three. Great movement there by Urunani. Parker on the baby hook. Lefty baby hook, that is. Great spin. Smooth. Left hook. Finish there. Mr. Parker. Parker now up to six points. Going three of six, 50% from the floor. Perry on the drive there. Ball called there. Good active hands by Urunani. 
they regain possession of the ball. And let's see if they will go for two for one possession here to end the quarter. Parker. Boom! As he goes back to back there, Malik Ngenza Hayo. He is finishing this quarter and this half as the hot hand for Urunani bringing the game to one. A fantastic way to close this quarter for Urunani. They have got a look to score here. And it's a turnover. Urunani with a chance to actually take the lead before going into the half time. Moving screen there called on Dondo. And he is incredulous remonstrating with the ref. Ref, I did not move. He is absolutely incredulous at that call, is Ndondo. Drive there. Looked for his hot hand there on that heat check, but Malik Genza Hayo could not finish. As we see, we come to the end of the half there with our scores. Beira, 29 and Urunani 28 a great half as we witnessed great battles in the paint area and it will be interesting how the po coaches come back with their troops in the second half Looking at some first half stats in this one point encounter. Beira from the inside, 10 of 23 to the 5 of 17 for Urunani. From the outside, from the three point line, Urunani connecting five of the 16 attempts and Beira two of their 11. Free throw line, Urunani zero free throws taken in that second quarter, still three of three, 100%, and Beira three of four. temperature outside continues to rise so the temperature on the court as as well we were treated to an exciting first half as Urunani started to fight their way back and at halftime it is 28 to Urunani 29 to Ferroviario Beira and uh, it's been exactly what we expected in terms of a contest because we know what is on the line it's an all important that coveted place in the basketball african league the winner will advance and pick up their automatic qualification and advance to the final and for the loser they still have to hold on a little bit more they have a lot of fighting to do but let's have a look at what transpired in that first half and uh, ishmael numamade seven points for him in the first and started to catch a bit of fire before urunani started to make their way back Got into foul trouble early with those with those two points in the first quarter. Bit of Iario 
Beira with a 19-15 lead. They did a, a good job of throwing different looks defensively at this experienced champion squad out of Burundi. And it's been quite interesting watching the battle as struggles from the perimeter for both teams. 5 of 15 as a 2-3 zone that Beira has thrown at this very big and physical Burundi squad has forced them to, to shoot from the outside. But 5 of 15 it was. They fought their way back on their largest scoring run of the game, that eight-point scoring run to come back. And we just have a look at the stats quickly. And uh, 10 of 33 total field goals. Free throw line has been scarce, but the foul count has been limited by the referees. 5 of 16, you see, and Ferroviario, Beira, 2 of 11. They've been scold from the outside. The rebounding battle, five offensive rebounds given up alongside the nine of Beira. And the turnover numbers quite even, so really even contest. And uh, yes, we are absolutely courtside here as uh, we get ready for second half action. But before we do that, I have an esteemed guest alongside me. Um, we have the pleasure of having BAL board member Ambrose Tashobia here to help interrogate and look at what the competition has been like. And Sakani Ngobeni and uh, Ambrose Tashobia, welcome. And sir, thank you for having me. Let's talk a bit about the competition in its entirety. The road to the BAL, both Division West and now we're in the semi final of the Division East. Has this been what you've expected? Yes, this is what we expected. Of course, this is a tournament of champions. This is a qualification uh, round that takes champions from all over the, the countries. And we, you expect a high level uh, of competitiveness. This is what we have seen. Uh, when you come to the Elite 16, this is the best of the best fighting to get a slot at uh, BAL. And to see games like this, like the one we're watching right now, is exactly what we, we came into this game with the number one in one group against the number two. But by halftime, you can see the one who came in as number two is on top of the game as it is. So uh, this is the growth of the game that we want to see. We want to see competitiveness. We want to see the grind. And hopefully by the time these teams get to be, uh, they will be sharp enough to compete with the other six teams that are already you know, predetermined to be in this game. For a lot of viewers, I'm sure that the question is that uh, this is our third um, qualification. It's the third time we've seen qualification. And the amalgamation between FIBA and the Basketball Africa League, you know, what are their plans for the next couple of years? Are you looking to expand qualification, maybe an Elite 24, or what is the thinking? So the plan next year is to have 32 teams uh, in the first round of Road to BAL. This year we had uh, 16 teams, uh, but next year we, we, we plan that we'll have a wider base. We are uh, in Africa in all the countries, and we expect that apart from the six countries that already have predetermined slots, uh, the other the countries have to be given a chance and these are all champions of the different leagues in the different countries so we want to grow the base we want to be uh, to have eight groups of four teams that then will, out of those will get teams that go to, go to the elite uh, elite 16 so that, that, that's that, that's the plan for the next year how do you think the NBA Academy performed uh, they, team. they did well. They did well for the youngsters at their age to be able to come and uh, you know work so hard uh, against these uh, old and experienced players who are professionals. I uh, you know they are right. They did so so well. They had two wins in the group stages. That's uh, it's amazing. But also uh, to be fair to all the other competition is that these are the best of the best kids on the continent. These are scouted very well from all over the continent, and these are the kids that we want to see uh, next uh, some a few years either be in the NBA or EuroLeague or Basketball Africa League itself. So it, it, it also comes home to what we, we, we thought is one of the major objectives of uh, forming this league, uh, FIBA in partnership with NBA, to be able to grow talent on the continent, give them hope on the continent. That's why we made this decision that they could be allowed to come into the Elite 16 and play as a team. So we, we expect to see such you know, experiences uh, moving forward. And since we're talking growth of the game, um, since the inception of the Basketball Africa League and the qualifiers, have we seen tangible growth here from, from a, an administrative perspective? Yes, we have. We have, uh, I think, after season uh, one, uh, we started seeing a bit of uh, uh, 
a raising level of competitiveness, especially on the national teams. One of the strategic objectives of our partnership is to, to make sure that our national teams on the continent become very, very strong. It's the reason behind the accreditation system that we have for Basketball Africa League, that all the teams that are here, they have eight players from their country, they have two other players from other African countries, and they are only allowed two other players outside of Africa. So what we are trying to do is to make sure that all those 10 players on all these teams will can easily come back home and help the national teams of the different countries uh, to, 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 for us to be able to have better and more prepared teams when it comes to Afrobasket, when it comes to all Afrocan and all these national team competitions. Uh, the last Afrobasket we had in Kigali had a level like we had never seen before and we can attribute much of that to the grind that we go through in the Basketball Africa League and we hope that we are doing a good job. Well, well I personally think we're, you're doing a fantastic job and if we look at um, uh, integrating development into the structure, um, what kind of plans exist because you know it's, it's nice to have the, the, the top tier but how do you feed into that because you know there, there's desire to play the game? First of all, uh, we, we have development in two ways. Africa, where we are right now, we need development at the grassroots. Okay, so it's, we have a program that we rolled out uh, two years ago, which is the national youth camps and the regional youth camps. These are all feeder uh, programs into the development of basketball on the continent. National youth camps, every country is mandated or can organize a camp for the top 50 kids and we send high level coaches uh, we, we are in a partnership with NBA also in that product that we are able to get the top instructors to come and give you know some good skill and tips to these young kids to work on their craft uh, later on we scout from these and go to the regional youth camps and even some of the uh, uh, BW kids that we have are, is, are scouted from the regional youth camps and these feed into the youth programs that we already have the under 16 and under 18 uh, continental championships but besides that we are saying that this uh, basketball Africa League should be a catalyst to the different leagues case in point if you watch the Rwanda League uh, this year, they had a final like they've, they've never had before because all of them are fighting to be in BL because uh, the champion of every league on the continent now, the plan is I want to be in Basketball Africa League. So it's a, a good catalyst, it's a, it's a good stimulant for, for growth. So even the clubs that don't make, make it here, Locally, they are fighting to be the champions. Locally, they are try trying to improve themselves to be the guys who have been here. If it's Burundi, they want to beat Unani. If it's Uganda, they want to beat Sito. If it's, uh, if, if it's South Africa, I I'm sure next year there's going to be a big fight whether Cape Town Tigers will come through or not. So that's the, 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 the incentive that BL comes with as far as growth of the game. So uh, once we have exhausted the base increasing on the the competition base to lead us into the elite 16 then we can go and create a second tier competitions for the teams that don't make it to be but for now we are there's a catalyst for the national league growth then once we have good national leagues and we have good uh, road to bar program then we are able to have much better uh, you know preparation for all the teams in the continent well, it's been very fascinating hearing from you and I'm sure our viewers at home can appreciate the, the amount of planning, the strategic planning that goes into the work behind the product that we see on the floor. We still have 20 more minutes of exciting basketball action because after this, we will have our first qualifier from Division East into the Basketball Africa League. So we get ready for this. Thank you, Mr. Ambrose. That was here for being here. Takani Ngobeni. And uh, we're going to hand over to commentary as we get ready for the second half. Thank you. It was a pleasure.
what an absolutely beautiful luxury to have when you your leading scorer remains scored almost scoreless with only three points in the game and yet you are only down one point i'm sure with the run then the surge that U urunani made to end the first half they will be coming out firing and even more confident that they will be able to settle and make sure that they make a solid run at it coach Mpumi. You've got to credit the defense of Beira, though. Fila, the man you are talking about, 0 of 3 from two-point range, 1 of 3 from the outside for those three points. Leading all scorers coming out the half, it is Njembere for Urunani. He has nine, and we've seen him be fantastic from that three-point line. On the side of Beira, though, with seven points, it's been Numa Mande, who we know has picked up two fouls already. Let's see how he can get going here in the second half. The crowd continues to trickle in as everybody continues to come in to witness some of the great basketball that we've lined up today. Murray gets the second half going for us as Beira brings up the ball, but Will Perry gives it away with Parker intercepting that and getting it back for Urunani. That's not going to be the start that Beira wanted. Indeed, what can Fila cook up here? Parker. Nijimbere. Looking at it. Driving there. Couldn't find the roll. Couldn't find the hole there for that three-point make. Parker on the inside. Travel called by the ref. Fantastic defense underneath the rim there by Beira as we see those two men there. Just standing straight up, putting the hands up, and making sure it's not committing any foul. Certainly, their long arms of the law there in the paint for the army in green. As Ubise finds Perry. Back to Ubise. Number Monday. Big rebound there. Short clock violation there as he was found in no man's land and instead of going up he looked to reset the play at top of the key unable to see that he was at the death of the shot clock Uri Nani have not been very good from the rebounding they have just 16 rebounds in the first half Beira of course was 26 and just that's going to be something to watch in this game you know Beira coming to this um, particular game averaging 35 rebounds a game while Urunani averaged just 20 and so the boards are going to be one to watch this must be a welcome sight there for coach Garcia and Urunani as Adonis Fila drives strong to the hole and gets fouled as he makes the play for the old school three Pilot last year in the BAL for Rwanda Energy averaged 10.7 points a game along with eight assists per game. He set the single game record for the BAL with 14 assists against AS Sun. Certainly you can you can just imagine and you can witness everything that he does on the floor in how he shares the ball and how he grinds it out even on both ends of the floor there as Nemamande driving just could not finish and Parker just put too much mustard there on it and Nijimbere couldn't catch the ball. What are some of the adjustments, coach, that you think uh, Coach Hernandez and Coach Garcia have called for their teams to start the second half? Well, early on in this one, we've seen Urenani get out into those lanes and pick up some quick steals from Beira. And so that's got to be something that's a focus for them. Perry on the pull-up, Perry on the find there as he adds three more for Beira. Perry looking to cook up the numbers for himself there and leading this Beira team to a victory. Fila there couldn't find it. Big rebound there by the big, big man, Baru Adehi. That was the first made three for Perry, 0-3 before that. And he must be feeling a little relief and joy to be able to connect from deep. Certainly a welcome sight there. Also for Coach Hernandez after yeah. seeing that. And Fila 
attempts yet another three could not connect as Nemo Mande comes out away with it for Beira just couldn't control it but maintains pulls up and makes the easy two and you can see early on here in the second half why it's so important for Numa Mande to remain on the floor. And so he's got to keep himself out of foul trouble. Nijimbera setting it up there for Orunani going inside, finding Parker. Parker on the drive, finds Nijimbera. Finds Parker. Had to get rid of it there to evade the shot clock violation. As Beira on the attack, Ubise goes up, Ubise finishes, clinical. That was Ubise on both ends of the floor, playing fantastic defense and contesting that shot and then coming the other way for the easy two in the paint. You always have to reward your big man for a job well done. And if he can run the floor like that, you certainly need to find him. Great find. Parker on the baseline. Couldn't finish there as he's sandwiched between Mare and Ubise, but will be going for two more at the charity stripe. Great drive there on the baseline by Parker. Sandwiched between the North Americans, William Perry, as well as Michael Mare. But also a poor job from Beira to guard the baseline. We saw the attempted reach there from Mangumbe once the man was past him. Parker misses his first free throw there. Splits the free throws there as he makes his second. Perry bringing it up. Finds Mare. Mare finds Ubise inside. Mare and Ubise. Beautiful connection there as Ubisa adds two more to his tally. We saw Urunani do a good job on the interior defense in the first quarter. It has not been the same here in the second half. Another turnover there uh, from Urunani. Nijim Beres stays with it, goes for the hunt, hunting down Nermomande and goes up there for the big block. He was chasing him down, timing him well, and definitely connecting for that spike. Nijimbere. Great defensive play there. Just showing that he's not a one-horse uh, one horse arsenal. He's able to even give you effort on defense. Not a one-trick pony. One-trick pony. We can see who went to the good school. Thank you, coach. Big rebound there by Mare. Way to stay with it, Parker. Nijimbera setting it up there for Urunani. Finds Fila. Fila on the drive. Loses it there. Whistle. Remonstrating there to the ref. Looks a bit rather frustrated there, uh, Adonis Filer, coach. Yeah, you can imagine that Filer's very frustrated right now. You know, they were up by one to begin this quarter, now down seven. And so it's been a big swing for Beira. And he has continued to struggle to score. Indeed, and Beira continues to find Ubisa inside. And he continues to go to work as he earns another trip to the free throw line. You got to go to what's working, and this Urinani team have not shown that they can slow down UBC. And so it's a great job from Beira to continue to give him the ball. He's getting down low, sealing the man beautifully on his back and being able to get to the rim. Great recognition there by Beira. As he misses his first there, Ubisa. Splits the pair there, making one of two. Beira only getting to the free throw line six times so far in this game, going at a 66% clip. 
and they're four of six from the charity stripe. The ref there having a conversation with Coach Garcia, who had a few matters and, or, and concerns that needed to be addressed. Landry back in the game for Urunani. The Bisa gathers, cleans it up as Perry brings it up, finds Mare. Mario, of course, once again, Ubisa running the floor. Mari finding him, rewarding him, and Ubisa making it a 10-point lead for Peira. Fantastic job there by Mari, and a great run by Ubisi to be the trailer there. Timeout called on the floor by Urunani. Coach Garcia has seen enough and would like to reset and resettle his troops back in the game and this quarter score now Beira has 12 and Urunani with three points in the first five minutes of this one standing courtside here close to the Urunani timeout and let me tell you that coach Garcia fiery fiery timeout and the one thing that is really hurting him is the execution on the side of Urunani he's he is livid at the fact that they can't execute against either Rosono or man to man and it, that was not an X's and O's timeout that was a timeout to try and get his players motivated we'll see if that timeout was effective Urunani on the attack there after the timeout. Foul. Looks like there's a technical foul called there on the floor. Ref conferring there Malik Ngenza Hayo. Perry makes the technical free throw there. And uh, that was a technical foul there called on Malik against Ohio as Urunani will stand by to inbound there with Adonis Feiler. Top of the key against the higher Legion Barry on the three, nothing there. Rebound there by Ubisi. Legion Barry seems to have cooled down a little bit after starting out red hot and going two for two to begin. Nemimanda there looking to go inside, but there's nothing there for Ubisi. Mare there putting in work. Big rebound there by Nemo Mande. Way to recognize and stay with it there, uh, did Nemo Mande. Certainly, that will be a great assist there for Mungwambe. Great recognition for Nemo Mande, indeed. Gezahayo, boom! As he shoots and makes from three-point land and gets fouled and one play great drive great outlet there by Adonis Feiler gains a high of going up and gets fouled there by William Perry making it the four-point play for Urunani and that is not something you expect to see from a player with the caliber of experience that William Perry has.
Yenza Hayo completes the four point play there for Urunani, bringing them within nine. Mari there on the drive. Nothing there. Active hands. Adonis. Nothing there on the three point attempt. Urunani brings it up. File on the drive there could not finish. He needs each and every one of those. Yeah, this, this shooting struggles have really continued for Fyler in this one. He has just five points in the game and is now one of six from the floor. Foul on the floor there on that drive. You, you certainly would like to see on that drive there, Fyler just unable to complete the play. Great defensive play for the Nomomande. Stays with it, just could not control. Just could not control there. Good Nomomande. Yeah, Nomomande not able to hold on to that Perry pass. And so it gives Urunani a chance to contest the bucket. Certainly better defense, transition defense there by Urunani, who certainly would have listened to the coach's instruction to limit transition and fast breaks for Beira. Yeah, that man there, Parker, did a good job to get down the floor and chase down that transition bucket. Couldn't find it there on that uh, play, but Parker stays inside. Parker stays strong. Parker goes up. Parker gets fouled. Parker goes to the free throw line for the old school three. Great rebound there by Parker. Putting in work, going up there. Staying with it, getting fouled. Way to do it on both ends uh, by Parker. Fantastic play by Parker indeed as we see him as the free throw. You've got to be impressed with how Urinani have come out after that timeout. Energy levels certainly looking better as Mari drives and finds Ubise inside for two more. There is nothing more beautiful than a telegram that cannot be intercepted and a pick and roll that can be completed each and every time it goes activated on the floor. Ubise now up to 13 points on the afternoon. Landry finding Parker there. Foul called, the travel called there on Landry. Austin Mofunanya to inbound there for Dibera. Perry on the slide. Certainly something that a Chris Brown would appreciate. The slips and slides and making sure that he stays, stays with the ball. Steal there by Urunani as Landry goes up for the two. Oh, found the favorable bounce there, did Landry. Good job to contest inside, making sure that Beira are not able to get yet another bucket. Nemo Mande on the attack there. Foul called on Malik Ngenza Hayo there on that drive by Nemo Mande. Nemo Mande driving there. Genzahayo unable to set his feet on time there. Nemo Mande on the attack. 
Great defense there as he fell into the trap. Possession, Orunani. Much improved defense from Orunani here following the timeout as we see a three. Another three there by Malik Ngenza Hayo, who continues to pile it on as he did to finish the first half of the game. Ball movement there by Fila, doing well to find his swingman Malik Ngenza Hayo, who goes up and the ball drops beautifully all net all day timeout debera Ubise has been a beast in the paint area, piling it on, and his guards, of course, finding him for those cuts and just cannot be denied. His efficiency has been phenomenal in this game, has Ubisi. He is up to 15 points, 7 of 8 from the floor, 87.5%. You have to appreciate the work that your big man continues to put on on the dance floor. Hayad Mongwambe going up strong for that flush, but getting resistance from Urunani. He will not be able to flush that amongst those trees, but indeed gets another opportunity on the stripe. It has been a back and forth third quarter from Urinani coming in down one to taking the lead by one to Bayo going up by as many as 11 to it now being a five point game. A game of chess indeed. Both teams know everything that is at stake and they will do everything to leave it all on the floor. Big rebound there by Parker as Mongwambe couldn't finish his second free throw. You have to appreciate the involvement and the effort of Filer that though he's not scoring much, he continues to find his teammates on those drives. And that's why coaches kept him on the floor. Fyler has been the leading scorer coming in. He's not able to connect today, but he's finding his teammates. He's playing good defense, and he's putting pressure on the Beira defense. Very important to know how to adjust your facilitation on the floor as we see Fyler now going to the free throw line. Makes his first. And just, you never want to send a player who's struggling and is actually a scorer to the free throw line. They get to see the ball go through the net and have easy points put up. We saw that earlier in the game with Nijimbere as Fyla makes it two for two. Nijimbere earlier on in the game certainly made two for two from the free throw line and that gave him confidence to start shooting more. Let's see how Fyla will fare from this point onwards. Ubise couldn't connect there as Urunani gets away with it. Fyla on the break. Fyla off glass, nothing there. Big rebound there. A man on the floor. Let's see what the refs call on that whistle. And it could go either way. It looked like there was a bit of a push off there from Mungwambe. But Fyla also having sold it. Fyla sold it well, but. I think at any given point in situations like such and Fyla is incredulous at that call because he believes he got the worst end of that stick and of course that foul on Fyla makes 
it. Shooting two for Beira as Urunani pick up a fifth team foul in the quarter. Austin Mofunanya making his first free throw there. Splits the free throws there as we see Urunani bringing it up for what should be the last possession of the quarter as they could not finish there with more great defensive work there by Beira to finish the quarter. And at the end of the third quarter, it is Beira who hold a slim lead of four points with the score standing at 48 to 44 to Urunani. Team manager of uh, Ferro Villarreal joins me now, Matias Martina. Your team has allowed Urunani to close that big lead. What do you need to do now to protect your cushion? To protect our cushion, uh, what we need now is just to play together because uh, we don't have a, a big a big team with uh, big players. So what we need just to play together. So if we play very nice on the defense, if we attack together, if we, do, we must sacrifice. I think the most important thing in this game is just we have a spirit of sacrifice. If we have this, we are, gonna, we are going to win the game. Thank you. Thank you. Looking at the third quarter stats at the end of the third, Beira have 16 on the inside of the 34. Urunani just 8 of 28 from the three-point line. 7 of 25 are Urunani. As we look at some of the highlights there, Nijin Beira on the drive, finding Paka at the behind the back. And another inter interception there by Nijin Beira, who has scored beautiful beautifully there beyond the arc and making that big defensive spike there uh, versus Nemo Mande. Nijimbera is certainly holding a great part of the energy for Urunani and you will hope to see if we are the coach that he will finish this game strong and joined by Adonis Filer as he starts this uh, quarter and the bench is Nijimbera. Nemo Mande gets us started on the quarter for Beira. Gets it inside there. Mare could not handle and control, but retains possession. Good job by Urinani to collapse on Murray as they saw the ball go over his head. Perry there inbounding for Nemo Mande. Perry. Mare finding it wide open there under the paint for the easy finish. It was a good job by Murray to chase down that rebound to pick up his fifth and sixth points in the game. A well balanced game. And both coaches will just be looking to get the edge and hoping for another spur of energy from their players to finish the game strong. Adonis Feiler, the ref just conferring and making sure that clocks are in place. I think we're in for an exciting 10 minutes, final 10 minutes, as one of these teams try to book a place to the Basketball Africa League in 2023. The big dance. Big drive there as Filer goes up. Still cannot connect as Perry gets away with it. Mari on the trail. Foul called there. Charge. Another one on the Donis Filer there as you see William Perry coming away with it 
Murray doing well to trail the play and continue on that attack. Perry to inbound there for Beira. Nemo Mande sets it up. Ubisa, Perry. Ubisa on the roll, nothing there. Mungwambe going strong, finds Ubise, who couldn't finish, but earns yet another trip to the charity stripe there. Great drive there by Mungwambe, drops it for Ubise. Fantastic pass by Mungwambe to find Ubisi there. Clean on his first. Ubise now up to 16 points on the evening. Make that 17. Perfect trip there for Ubise. Certainly a key to, to this performance by Beira on this day. Michibere back in the play. Finds Parker. Parker finds Nijimberi. Murray on the rebound. Finds Nemo Mande. Very beautiful play there. Nemo Mande connecting with Mungwambe. Could not flush it, but make sure he's clinical to earn two more points for Peira. That was a lovely find by Mungwambe Mande. Just putting it up over the rim. Beautiful patience. Beautiful execution there. Michael Kuzu Gumbizwa. This game is continuing to heat up. Neither of these teams want to give it up. They will not be denied. Mari there couldn't finish. Landry on the rebound. Bringing it up there. Finds Filer. Filer on the another attempt. Still cannot connect there. Can Filer. Coach Garcia also animated still there on the bench. Looking for answers. Fala now one of six from downtown. Memo Monday. Slips there, cannot control. But Fala gets it back for Urunani. Nijimbere on the drive. Couldn't finish there on the left. Out of bounds called there, as you see. Fala demonstrating there on himself with frustration. It has been a frustrating afternoon for Adonis Feiler. He is just 15.38% from the floor, going 2 of 13 as he heads to the bench. Feeling rather dejected, it looks like. Certainly, Coach Garcia recognizing that and bringing that man Malik Ngenzahayo back on the floor to give Adonis a breather to hopefully be able to finish this game on a higher note later on. Nguambe finds Mare. Nemo Mande pulls up. Nothing there. Nemo Mande certainly has played well to this end of the game for Beira. He has indeed. He has 11 points on the evening. The second player for Beira in double digits, and of course the other, Ubis, with his 17. Parker, on the drive there, little shoelace, working in, going in the paint strong, just couldn't finish, but way to stay with it is Landry. Way to stay with it there, Captain Landry Ndikumana for Urunani. Five point game coach it is it looks like we are going down to the wire we certainly have a whole lot more basketball to go in this one Mungwambe finds Perry Perry on the drive finds Mungwambe pull up nothing there tussle there between Landry and Murray Landry comes away with it. Nijimbere 
on the drive. Splits the entire lane, but is not able to finish there. Grivet, Nijimbere. Mare on the drive, finds Perry. Perry on the pull-up. Couldn't make there. Mungwambe on the rebound. Gets it back for Beira. Perry sets it up. Perry sets it up on the drive. Finds Mare. Fi Mare finds Ubisi. Nothing there on the hook shot. Almost tapped back in there by Mungwambe, but Urunani comes away with it. Nijimbere. Nijimbere! A big one there and a welcome sight there for coach Garcia and the Purundi contingent traveling. Don't let that man get hot because you will be in trouble. Brings the game to two points to Beira. Perry on the drive. Nothing there. Nothing there as the Beira players call for goaltend. And the refs just quickly conferring amongst each other on that play. William Perry from North Carolina with love, making sure on that drive, Nijimbehe. It certainly does look like a goaltend, and the referee confirms it. Goaltend Goal awarded. Goaltend indeed. Nijimbehe just getting the ball on its way down. And so it'll be two more credits to Perry and Beira. We are in for a treat coach Mpumi. Nijimbere, you cannot give him that level of daylight because he will definitely punish you. Perry on the free throw line to shoot one more. Perry makes and brings the lead once again to five for Pera. And off that play, William Perry quietly moving into double digits. He now has 11. Definitely, Mongwande. You have to lace them up tight at this point of the game to make sure that you are strapped in for a strong finish. Michimbere, looking at it, pulls up. Nothing there. Stays with it. Travel call there by Malik Genzahayo. They cannot believe it. Perry bringing it up there. Finds Murray. Murray on the drive. Finds Nemomande. Nemomande on the drive. Finds Murray. Sets it up. Looking at it. Ubise on the screen. No roll there. Finds Nemomande. Pulls up. Landry on the rebound there. This is a good offensive possession by Beira. Just making multiple passes to get the best look. Unfortunate not to make. Landry cutting the lane there like a hot knife through butter to make sure he adds two more to cut that deficit to only three. We have a one possession game. Nemo Mande, top of the key, looking at it there on that drive. Nemo Mande smooths off the glass there, showing that you can certainly still use premium banking even at this hour of day. Foreign exchange, as Mpo would put it. Nijimbere on the pull up, nothing there. Upise cleans it up, finds Perry. Perry finds Murray. I'd like to see Urunani run that offense a little bit more, look for some execution and not take quick shots. Perry finds Murray. Parker there sends it back on that attempted find to Ubise. A much better interior offense from Urunani to contest those passes inside to Ubisa because once he catches that low, he's very difficult to guard. Very difficult to guard indeed. As we see the reintroduction there of Austin Mofunanya into the game and a shot clock violation called there as Beira could not recognize uh, the clock. Timeout called there by coach Garcia.
coach Garcia setting it up there and hoping that his troops will be able to reciprocate those instructions so that with just over three and a half minutes to go, we've got something going for them as we go down to Quinton. Thank you very much, Hughes. I just stood by Coach Luis Hernandez bench and he's emphasizing the fact that they have only one foul with just about three minutes to go. So despite the fact that they've held on to the lead for 36 minutes in this game, despite the fact that they've turned the ball over 36, 20, 20 times and, and they're shooting, points in the paint have been where they've won this game so far and now he's emphasizing ex execution on the defense event and really defense win championships. So I guess that's what it's going to come down to. defense indeed because when you get those stops you are giving yourself an opportunity to go to the opposite end and earn some good points to cut in your deficit and get give yourself a chance to winning this game holding foul called on the floor there Beira to retain the possession and that's the fourth team foul in the fourth quarter for Urunani. And so on the next one, Beira will head to the free throw line. William Perry there on the drive and takes a bad fall there. And it looks like he hit his head on the floor there. Hard drive there, meeting the wall that is Captain Landry, Dick Perry, and just took an awkward fall there grimacing in pain there as he holds his head yeah his head just hitting the ground unfortunately he had the ball in his hands and so wasn't able to break his fall indeed good that he's up while wow, grimacing but uh, looking like he will be able to go to the free throw line Very tough is William Perry. And you know he does not want to get out of this game. Two minutes and 49 seconds to a spot in the Basketball Africa League he in 2023. Go. He will certainly rather leave it all on the floor, coach. Battle, and that is how you know your soldier is battle tested. Novella on the screen there, giving instruction to Nomomande. He knocked some good pieces to him. As Perry makes two from the charity strike. Filer bringing it up, looking at it, calls for the screen there. Kingenza Ohio. Three more for him. Bringing and cutting the deficit to only four. And here come Uri Nani. They're certainly not going away. And of course, Ubise will be able to rebuttal because Ubise has been your go to guy and your bread for this game. Ubise has been phenomenal. Indeed, he now has 19 points, Juice, on 72% from the floor. Efficiency, absolute efficiency, and that is the level of performance that you need from your key veterans. Couldn't complete the three-point play there, Ubise, as Fyler brings it up. Another screen there, a drive for Fyler. Finds again. Boom! Michael Kazungu Zivwa makes another big three there for Urunani. This is certainly going down to the wire, coach. Back to back three pointers to keep Urunani in it. Nothing there by Namamande, but Mungwande. Big rebound there putting in work on the boards and bringing the lead back to five for Beira. 
Faila on the drive, and I'm sure he will be relieved to see that ball going down. Coach Pumpumi. Absolutely, Faila is going to be excited <laughs> that he's able to find the bottom of the net. And now let's see how his radar will be looking to finish the game. Perry looking at it. Screen there by Obise. Obise on the drive. Obise on the left, but could not finish there as Faila brings it up for Urunani. A rare miss there by Obise. Great find there, just could not finish against Ahayo. Perry bringing it up there, almost lost it. Maintains control, finds Murray. Urunani trapping there. Great stop there, just could not control. Good, good fighter. Good active hands there as we are within a minute of the game, Coach Mpumi. We're seeing a lot of heart. We're seeing a lot of hustle from both of these teams. They really want this win and this spot in the BAL. And both teams are aware that this game can still go either way, Coach. One of these teams will go to bed tonight knowing they've qualified as we see the replay of those two threes that brought this game into a one possession game and of course the man that's giving those assists is a man that has been struggling as far as scoring is concerned but with facilitation he on continues to find his teammates continues to make sure that he is bank in this game indeed we have a request for instant review systems referees now looking over at the monitor to discuss that last call The refs, of course, Sorry. conferring after that instant Sorry. review Sorry. that Sorry. the Sorry. ball Sorry. shall certainly stay with Beira on that play. Three seconds on the clock. Let's see what Beira can cook up on this play, coach. They will be desperate to score off of this possession and extend it to a two-possession game. Obise on the drive there, couldn't finish. Mari also could not finish. Great follow through there by the big man. Baru Adehi. Fila heaving the ball there after that trap. Beira certainly being active on the defensive end. Fila making sure that he stays with it and heaving between the trees there. And he certainly thought he got fouled there and so was unhappy for that turnover. Beira to inbound and it looks like Urunani have implored a full court press there. Mare bring it up. Upise, Nemo Monday, Perry. Running the clock down there. That's a veteran play. Perry on the drive. Perry on the lay. Couldn't finish. Ball stays up and ball falls there. Active hands by Ubise. And you can see the excitement there with the Beira players coach. And with that too for Beira. Beira beginning to see the writing on the wall and a spot in the BAL next season. Certainly looking Perry on that drive, going up there, just couldn't finish. But of course, that man Ubise stays with the play as he has the entire game, stamping his authority in the paint area. Big moves by big players BMT big match temperament
of course, the young fellas, the young kids, the future of the game, still very much engaged in this game. Ori Nani are going to have to try and score really quickly and then potentially off the main bucket, foul Beira, send them to the free throw line and stop the clock. Of course. Mwambe blocking the inbound and uh, Beira gets possession there, comes out with the steal as we see William Perry coming away with it and the bench certainly celebrating because they know victory is in their clutches. Victory in their clutches indeed. Five seconds left on the clock and your best free throw shooter at the line. You, you can expect William Perry to make at least one of these and send the lead to six. To certainly ice the game. That man, Adonis Filer, will certainly want this one back because with the entire t tournament, he has put in great performances. And this just became too little for him, too late, as he could not be able to lead Urunani past this Beira team as Perry splits the free throws to ice the game. Orinani, though, will have another shot at the BAL, of course, tomorrow in that third and fourth playoff as they take on the loser of the next one. It is celebration time on the floor by the Beira players who know that they are now guaranteed a spot in the next round of play as they continue and they'll be playing in the final tomorrow uh, coach but it is absolute joy on the floor as you see Mare embracing the de dejection on the faces of Urunani because while there is the thrill of victory there is also always the agony of defeat the agony of defeat indeed for Urunani but again, they have another opportunity tomorrow to get a shot at that ultimate prize. And the ultimate prize, Juice, is a qualification in the Basketball Africa League. And of, of course, as we see there, to confirm the full-time score there, Beira 68, Urunani 62 there, in what was easily a very beautiful and closely fought encounter by two beautiful giants of the game. Of course, you have just seen the highlights there from the big man, Ubise, who is indeed our player of the match, leading Beira to a great victory there. And as you can see on the floor, it is absolute jubilation for Beira of Mozambique. Ubis did a fantastic job, waited till this game to have his best game, has not been in double digits in this competition so far until today and he finished with 21 on 64% from the floor, 9 of 14. Very big one there as we see that man William Perry certainly leading uh, Beira to a great victory with his facilitation and shooting on the floor. Certainly happy to take this one back as we look at the stats. From the two-point range, Beira 23 of 48, Urinani just 11 of 35. Urinani connecting from outside 11 times, whereas Beira just three. Urinani 70% from the free throw line.
Well, I am now joined by the player of the match, that is a Halton Obese. Take us through your emotions right now. I mean, you guys are celebrating, looking happy. Yeah, we are happy because uh, the game was very, very, very hard. Uh, the running teams is good teams, but uh, we have a strong mind and we fight for the game and we, and we won. It was a hard-fought victory. How do you think they were able to bounce back? Because at some point they were able to close the lead. Uh, it's amazing. Back-to-back -back ball is amazing. Uh, we practicing uh, all year for the for, for the go to back-to-back -back ball, and uh, it's amazing. Uh, no words to say about the feelings. It's amazing. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. That is Halton Obese just emphasizing amazement throughout. Of course, the team is in excitement. And uh, talking about excitement, I am now joined by the captain, that is Armando Bartista of Ferrovia Rio. I mean, what a match here today. Take us through your thoughts on this particular game. Eu penso que, eh, primeiro, nós sabíamos que o adversário é difícil e o que nós tínhamos, que tínhamos, tínhamos como objetivo era contrariar as peças principais da equipa adversária e conseguimos na primeira parte. Na segunda parte estava, estava um bocadinho complicado, mas conseguimos acertar para que o resultado seja ao nosso favor. Can you please translate? You can take the mic. He said that he have, we have a good game. He, we fight, we fight, we fight together. And uh, now we, you know, you, we stay in the ball now. Well, thank you so much. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Well, it does look like uh, we are unable to speak to the captain of 